Everything about me is unlikely. Yeah. I was unwanted, unintended, adopted six weeks later. My dad was an ROTC PhD professor of biology. My mom was teaching second grade because her mom taught second grade. You know, there's nothing about where my life went and ended up that has anything to do with any of that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you know, people look at, oh, okay, well, you know, you won all these competitions. That was at the end. You know, the whole, yeah. the whole thing proceeding, and I was sick. So I had a lot of catching up to do physically and emotionally and athletically. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know how to do anything. From first steps until my last competition, it was 16 years. So the last six were pretty good. You know, preceding that, I wasn't very good. I, like regionally, yes. I could hold you my own to be regionally. in the game. It's like saying a quarterback in the NFL sucks. They yeah. don't, you don't really mean he sucks because he made it into the NFL. But parents knew that you were good enough to where we should be chasing this, but they had no idea that you were good. It wasn't even about being good. It was about the fact that I was so sick for so long and all of a sudden I get on the ice and I'm starting to grow again starting to develop again. Yeah. I'm starting to show signs of life again. And it's like, okay, this is the one thing that works yeah, okay. here. Do that. We're, we're going to leverage everything to, you know, keep this thing going. And, and, you know, for the longest time, I just, I was asymptomatic and I just kind of rolled through things and I, I just really started improving and getting the right kind of coaching. But it, it was, you know, I, my first nationals, I fell five times in a three minute program. Wow. Wow is right. I think it's a record. That sounds like me at the ice rink. My mom came home from a doctor's visit and in a very cheerful, very upbeat tone, she said, I've just come from the doctor and I've been diagnosed with a disease called cancer. So she said, we're broke. I'm going to need some help. So um, everybody got duties and mine was make it a good year because this is your last year in skating. At the end of the competitive season, I go back home, be with my parents because my mom had sort of taken a turn for the worse. And I remember being in her room until about 3.30 in the morning. I was awakened with the news that my mother was gone. I just went in the backyard and I started walking. And it was in that walk that I decided I didn't have to do a lot of bad things because I didn't feel good. A couple of people I knew had, had lost parents, you know, different things and they just, drugs and alcohol, you know, because it just kills the pain. Yeah. And I was like, ah, it wouldn't make her happy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> what would make her happy? Well, why don't I just try to be the person she always dreamed I could be? Why don't you just wake up, put your big boy pants on and get to work? <laughs> and so um, I just decided I was going to honor her in every way I possibly could on the ice. And, and um, you know, I was like, you're going to be late. Nope. Nope. Honor your mom on time. That's going to do a long program run through. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing it today. Uh, Okay, mm -hmm. honor your mom. It's, I don't care if it's summer, I'm doing a long program run through. And, and in that, um, I just got stronger, mm -hmm. a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. And so from the ninth place finish, the last competition she ever saw me skate in, the next year I'm on the podium at nationals and I'm ranked 11th in the world. Wow. You know, they asked me at TEDx Nashville, asked me to do a talk and I go, what do you want me to talk about? And they go, whatever you want. Nobody's ever talked about the one thing, the one thing we all, endure yeah. everyone there's no one in this planet that has not suffered so the one thing I've, I've always really felt was when you're coming into a period of suffering it's a fork in the road i always joked you know yogi Berra says when you get to the fork in the road take it you know it's like that only <laughs> so um, it's but you know we look at a fork in the road like this right but suffering isn't like that it isn't just left or right yeah it's up or down so you have three choices you can succumb, right? Just let it take you. You can adapt. You can just stay right there at the fork and not go either way. Yeah. Or you can start to climb and that's where you evolve and you become something you may never have even thought you could become. Like really, like I'm still here and I'm more in touch with who I am than I've ever been in my life because of that period of suffering. And it's a choice. To climb is the choice. Yeah. Because it's work, right? To, you know, you know, you can run down a hill and it feels like nothing, right? Or on a bike, you can get on a bike and you just don't have to pedal. You can, it'll take you down. But it's that climb, that's where you really get strong.